Now, if you've watched any of the Material Graph Monday videos before, you know what to do. You're gonna need project files if you wanna follow along. Head on over to willgibbons.com downloads to get your project files. All right, I hope you got a cup of coffee and you're ready to rock this one out. Once you open up the project files, you're gonna find the coffee mug and drag that into the Keyshot window. We'll go ahead and take our default import settings here. And first things first, we're going to go ahead and actually throw on a different lighting environment. And I've got a custom one for you this time. It's called Two Panels Sharp Pins MCM. So if you need to import this, you're gonna go into your project files and see it shows it right here. Now uh, you're gonna use the folder with the arrow on it to import, open it up, and it should show up in your Keyshot environments. Double click it, there we go. Double click your material on the mug to open up its properties, go into the material graph. And we have our root node on the upper right, we have a diffuse material. Double click it, change it to plastic. So this will be our, our mug material. Set this diffuse color to the blue that is on our photo reference. So we'll go ahead and eyedropper that photo. So we're color picking that blue. And then I wanna drop it, make it just a little bit darker. And then I'll save it in the upper left-hand corner of my palette down here. And then the next step, we wanna go ahead and make the white part on the inside. So let's duplicate our plastic. And this time we're gonna just set this to 82% white. And we'll add this as another label. All right, to uh, mask out our plastic, uh, the white part, we're gonna go down to our textures and grab a color gradient, hit C. We're gonna plug this, well, we'll plug it in in a minute. Let's change our gradient type to cylindrical and we will scale it down a little bit. And we are gonna bring the white color stop next to the black color stop. And we'll scale this down even further. And again, from the top view, we're gonna to try to align this with our mug. So if we take our scale down even further and hit our move texture tool, we can nudge this over. There we go. And then we wanna uh, bring the white closer to the black and it's still a little too large so we can scale this down even further yet. That's looking pretty close. Just nudge this on over. And I want the white and black to be very close once again. Spectacular. <clears throat> Hit the green checkbox. C to get out of that preview. Plug this into our diffuse of our plastic. And now we have the white inner part. Oh, we're a little too big still so let's go to our color gradient and let's just scale this guy down. Oh, you know what? I plugged it into diffuse. I want it into opacity. And then with our color gradient, let's scale it down. There we go. Much better. Now you see some on the bottom. Um, if I turn off shadows with the S key, you can see, yep, that's an issue. So we'll use another color gradient. And this time we're gonna rotate. So black is on top. And we're gonna scale this guy down and take its, um, we'll move it down and we'll scale it down. And we want this scale to be something like two millimeters. And then we're just gonna move this down and we wanna make sure that we are covering up the white that's showing on the bottom. So that means that we actually need black on the bottom, white on top. So we're gonna swap these color stops. And, what, and then we'll hit the green checkbox and we'll get out of our preview. And if we get a color composite, we can take both color gradients into the source, into the background, take the color composite into the opacity of our white plastic label. And then we're gonna set our color composite to multiply and our black or our white goes away here. Now, if you do too much of this, see we do have some white on the bottom, you'd have to use another label to cover that up because of the shape of this mug, but we're not gonna go that far. This is totally good for what we need. Next, let's hit S to turn shadows back on. So we're gonna take our second color gradient, duplicate it, and we're going to take our plastic, right click, duplicate, and this one's gonna be the black rim, so let's set it to uh, colors almost to black. And we're gonna add it as a label, and then we need to use our, our new color gradient and this time we want to move the black up. So we're gonna say move texture and just drag this up so it's close to the very top. And where the white is, that's where our black rim will show up. And I wanna bring the black color stop closer to the uh, white color stop to kind of sharpen the edge a little bit. So now if I plug this into the opacity, 
So again, this is a very much a rinse and repeat process of simply moving masks around, really, that's all we're doing. Um, you can do this you know, as much as you need to, which is great. Now, I do wanna sharpen this up a little bit here. And I'm seeing some blue bleeding through here on the other um, labels. So I can take my, uh, where is it? I can take this color gradient, the first one we set up, and I think I can make it just a little bit larger. So maybe 44. And now that blue is closer to the outer edge. That fixes that. And we can still sharpen up our black rim much better. Now it's time for the fun part, the white speckles. So we're gonna go ahead and get a texture called spots. And if we preview this, this is fun. So we're gonna go ahead and set our black to white and our white to black because we're gonna use this for another mask. Now we wanna get some irregular shapes here and we wanna do some stuff with this texture. Let's take our levels up to three. So we have a bunch more spots of varying sizes. Let's take our distortion up to maybe 0.75. Let's take our density down a little bit, say 0.75. And then what we're gonna do is take our fall off up a little bit to soften the edges. So you can see our fall off is gonna soften the edges there. I'm gonna get another plastic label. This is again, very repetitive. You, you get what we're doing here. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy and this is gonna become the speckles. So we should probably be naming these. I'll go ahead and start with the top one, double click it, I'll name the node uh, blue and then I'll name this one, which is, what's this one? White, we'll call this one white. We'll call this one black. And then we'll call this one speckles. There we go. So now we know what's going on with them since these thumbnails don't actually update. Um, so with the speckles, we're gonna choose the light blue color that we have on our mug on our photo reference. So let's go ahead and set our diffuse color by going in here and choosing our eyedropper tool. And we're gonna color pick this light blue that the speckles is made of. And we're gonna go ahead and add this as a label. Now, interestingly enough, this covers everything. We want it to be on top of our blue, but underneath everything else. So here's what we need to do. If we double click on our root node and go to our labels, we'll find that speckles is on top. Let's move it down and down. And that way it's behind the white and the black, but it's on top of the blue. So next we need to use our mask that we made with our spot. So plug it into opacity of speckles and it works perfectly. That's pretty cool. Now we're not done yet because if you look here, it's actually allowing some of the underlying color to bleed through. So what I wanna do is take my color in spots instead of white, pure white, I wanna make this like maybe a 90% white and that way we see some of the blue underneath it. Speaking of which, we have some detail to work on. Notice we have these splotches or these speckles in here, like the dark splotches. We're gonna use another texture for that. So let's right click and go down to textures and color, no, 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 sorry, noise texture. C to preview, bring this down small, 0.75 maybe, maybe 0.5. Let's do this. Let's do a right click, utilities, and color composite, I think. And let's plug this into our diffuse. Let's plug our noise into our source. And let's take the color that we used on our plastic, this blue, remember we saved it. Let's go ahead and plug that into our color composites background color and plug this into plastic. And now let's say that our blending mode within our color composite is set to overlay. And now you can see how the noise is giving us those cool patterns. Now we could take this from overlay maybe into screen, we could go multiply, whatever we think is gonna work and look good. I kind of like the way multiply looks. So I'm gonna take this and just reduce the um, effect of the source, which is noise texture. So it's not quite so strong. I don't want it to darken the color of my mug so much, but I do want to see these kind of spots that we get in there. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe it's getting a little too gray still, so we can reduce this a little bit. And to compensate if we need, we can go to our background color and just saturate it some more and lighten the color some more. And that should do it pretty. And if we want, you know, we can, we can play with those a little bit. Maybe we go a little bit larger on those, so maybe 0.75. I think that looks pretty good. Now, we also need to worry about um, getting these this cool 
texture that you see here in the reflections. Right now we're perfectly sharp reflection. Uh, we have perfectly sharp reflections. Oh, also, before we even do that, we should be able to see a little bit of that noise coming through behind our spots or our speckles. So what we could do is we could also combine this noise with our spots. So for our color, we could take our noise and plug it in. And now we can kind of see through those spots, which is really cool, but it's a little too much. We see through it too much. So here's what we're gonna do. Grab that connection, go to utilities and color to number, hit C to preview. And let's just take our output two and bring it up to two. Now we're looking, uh, it's a little too bright. Let's bring it up to 1.5, but mostly we're gonna bring our output from, which is the black point and bring this up so it's not quite so dark. And there we go. Now we have some of those kind of same like burned areas with, with we can see through that there. So that's cool. Now let's get on to our cool reflection texture on the surface, bump texture. So we're gonna go right click, textures, noise fractal, hit C to preview, scale this guy down to about one, really small. And we're gonna plug this into the bump channel of our blue plastic. So into bump, and immediately we get pretty sweet results. It's too strong though. We wanna tell it to back off a little bit. So we're gonna do this by going into our blue plastic to its textures, click on bump, and then take the bump height, which is at 0.1, bring it down to 0 0.05, so we'll cut it in half, it's still too much. 0 0.02 um, is looking a little bit better, maybe 0 0.01. That's looking pretty good. Definitely noticeable, even from a distance, which is nice. One thing that's pretty common in, to do in Keyshot uh, with ceramics or what I like to do to make them look even shinier. I know this is a little controversial here. We're gonna go into our blue plastic and take its refractive index up from 1.5 to 1.6 or even 1.7. And this isn't really a good practice for making things shinier, but in this case with kind of like a clear coat on an enamel like this, it, I think it works pretty well. Um, also the rest of our materials are too smooth. So let's take that noise fractal and make sure that same bump is going into all of our plastics. So into the bump of the white and into the bump channel of the black and into the bump channel of the speckles. Very good, now we're getting this nice Perfect, yeah, that looks great. We're almost there. There's a couple little details we can do. One big thing I wanted to make sure I did, let's see, I'm gonna try to compare the reference. Let's go ahead and throw a label on here. I, I mean, we've done labels, but like, let's put a graphic on here. So pulling from our project, I've got a logo, a Material Graph Monday logo. Check it out, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and drag this onto the mug and add it as a label and just hit the green checkbox. And then inside our material graph, everything's nice and clean now. So here's our label and it's going into this plastic. Well, let's fix our mapping first. Let's take this down to cylinder, center it on the part, hit move texture and fit to Y. And then we wanna rotate this around our model. So I'm grabbing the green circle and dragging. And now it's massive. Let's turn off use DPI for size and scale this guy down. That looks pretty good. And here's what's, Here's what's interesting. We have a white label, but I don't want this label to be white. I want it to be black. So we're gonna set this not in, not in the diffuse channel, but down to the opacity channel. And I'm going to change this node from plastic. Now, I don't want this to be pure black. Let's go ahead and take this up a little bit. It's not quite too dark. There we go. And you'll notice that we don't have any of our nice bump texture on here. Well, to do that, we have to go to our blue, the base material, go to its textures, Make sure we click on bump and turn on apply bump to labels. So now our label's affected by that, which is awesome. And that's mostly gonna do it, guys. I mean, that's what I wanted to accomplish with this tutorial, walk you guys through how to use labels and lots and lots of textures as masks or opacity maps within our labels to really get a nice elegant material. So here's our material graph. I hope that was fun. I don't know, what do you guys think about this new MGM logo? Would you guys wear it on a, a shirt or a coffee mug or something? I don't, you guys let me know. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it for us today. Let me know in the comments if you guys like this. Also, suggestions for future episodes. Let me know what materials you wanna see broken down and I'd be happy to 
give them a shot if I think I can. I'll see you next Monday on another Material Graph Monday. And until then, happy rendering.